الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ربش رحلی صدری ویسر علی عمری وحل العقدت من لسانی یفقہ قولی نحمد و نسلی علی رسول کریم و ماں بعد السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ویلکم بیک ڈیئر بردرز اینڈ سسٹرس ٹو این در ایپیسوڈ آف اسلامک فائنینس We started off the last episode, we explained as to what went wrong because it was relevant, because it was necessary before we bring in the Islamic finance in order to have a comparison that if the world is looking for a stable system, it is Islamic finance. In the last episode, we discussed about the hedge funds, how the hedge funds caused this debacle. Somebody uh, pointed out very correctly, a friend of mine, he said that, why is it called hedge funds? Because when you say hedging, automatically the, um, your mind goes towards safety, towards security, towards making some kind of arrangement for the rainy days. That's what it is known for, hedge your risk. But unfortunately, when we look at hedge fund term, we think of conservatism, we think of defensiveness, we think of protection. But none of these things were available in the hedge funds. They were very aggressive. They uh, compromised on all the uh, risk tools. They did not think of the investors funds, investors money. They only thought of their own performance bonuses. And they became complacent and then they compromised. And what we see here is our own doing, the human beings. The vicious cycle of lending, as we discussed in the last episode, kept on borrowing, kept on borrowing. And the lenders also were very happy. They were lending to hedge funds. And they were happy that their asset book is uh, growing. Because for a lender, every new loan creates a new stream of income, interest income. And every loan paid eliminates the income stream. And this is point to ponder how far it can continue. The lending cannot continue forever. For any lender institution, in order to make money, it must lend. And if the loans have been extended, it generates more income. The rolling over makes more interest income. So everybody is looking at lending more and more so that more and more income streams can be generated. Each time there is a loan paid immediately, it is re-lent. The amount is re-lent, recycle. It's a vicious cycle. It will never come to an end. But is this what the human beings are um, looking for? An unending vicious cycle of lending? I'm sure not. The uh, Islamic finance, when it comes to managing of finance is not based on lending or borrowing. The moment that Islamic money is invested, the risk is shared. In the conventional lending scenario, the risk is not shared. It's shifted. The risk is shifted. And the lender is giving the money to the borrower, shifting the risk. Let the borrower do whatever the borrower wants with that money. I'm not responsible for the consequences. 
And similarly, when the CDS came, the credit default swaps, it made it even easier for the lenders. The more you lend, the more you buy the CDS. False sense of protection. It didn't prove to be uh, protective, the CDS. So this false sense of protection is not there in Islam. It's not there in Sharia finance. In Sharia finance, you are there on the ground. You are hands-on because it's your equity. Because you haven't shifted the risk. Because you are exposed to the risk. And when you are exposed to the risk, you will ensure that the money has been spent correctly, invested correctly, and the return is coming out. And the actual, you know the uh, Sharia definition of profit? Whatever exceeds the capital is profit. If the capital is 100 at the time of starting the uh, uh, venture, upon completion of the term, if the capital is 110, it means that the original capital is intact, and whatever exceeds the original capital is profit. So that is the profit. That needs to be uh, distributed between the parties. But if 100 has become 90, it means that the original capital has contracted. It has shrunk. And in that case, there is no profit. There is a loss. So if there is a JV or the partnership, then the parties would bear the loss on a prorata basis. And if it is a fund management, which you will uh, come to know, we have uh, prepared exciting episodes on uh, all aspects of Islamic finance. And from the other experts, you will know how fascinating the Islamic structures are, in which every structure has got a different nomenclature. It has got a different characteristic. And it is suited for a different need. One size does not fit all in Sharia finance. In Islamic finance, the risk is accepted. It's not shifted. So we are risk akin people. Because it is a human nature that when you are involved, when you are there, then definitely you are more careful. It's your money, it's your equity. And when you are more careful, the chances that the venture will go haywire are reduced or almost eliminated. Definitely there are uh, situations where, where there is a loss. But then that loss is also taken the same spirit as the profit. If you say Alhamdulillah when the profit comes, then you also say Alhamdulillah when the loss comes. Because both the profits and losses come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you follow the rules and if you accept the loss in the same spirit as you accept the profit, as you celebrate the profit, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you. With this blessing, you will be able to compensate for that loss in the future transactions. Because you have, and there have been many cases like that, that people accepted the loss and they said, this is Allah's will. And then came the uh, next transaction, which gave them so much profit that they forgot about the loss. The condition is that you follow the Sharia principles, you follow Allah's rules, and then you will never go wrong. In, this, uh, in the wake of this crisis and in this uh, scenario, Islamic finance is like a breath of fresh air. It's like uh, the fragrance in this stinking, stagnant water of conventional finance. Islamic finance is a fragrance because it shows you the way, how you can fix this. And once you have fixed this, then there is no looking back. Then there will be no crisis. Then the list of unending crises will end there. What you will have in future will be a fair distribution of wealth, will be the fair availability of opportunities, will be the fair allocation of resources. In conventional financial world, there is an inverted pyramid, inverted pyramid. On top, 
we have uh, people, the lenders, who get easy money and who uh, spend lavish lifestyle. But at the bottom, there is hardly any support because we don't have the foundation there. There is hardly any, it's not backed up by, it's an inverted pyramid. In Islamic finance, it is not inverted pyramid. It is a rectangular, rectangular sort of structure whereby the um, assets, whatever is being financed, is based on assets. The base is full of the assets, the goods and the services, and the debt which is resulted from transactions, and this is interest-free uh, debt. It is not uh, debt in the uh, context of uh, conventional financing, where it is interest-based debt. So these debts can be traded, but not at any discount or a premium. These debts can be traded at the face value. We'll take a short break and we'll we come back, we'll discuss it further. Spread the word of Islam. Shirk. Innovations. Showing off. Crimes against society. Crimes against the family. Crimes against yourself. Why do you think evil and corruption has appeared on the face of the land and in the sea? It is because of the evil which the hands of men have put forth. Sins darken the heart, take us away from Allah's mercy, and lead to our destruction and corruption. In order to avoid evil, you need to understand it. Join me, Abdurrahim Green, for a new series discussing the major sins only on Peace TV. To know the most serious and bad sins, as well as how to refrain from them, join Abdurrahim Green in Major Sins every Friday at 3.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 2 a.m. India on Peace TV. Where truth is hidden, and misleading quotations create confusion. Where truth is hidden, lack of knowledge and wisdom cause upheaval and commotion. Where truth is hidden, manipulated scriptures and twisted facts emerge. This very hidden truth creates false propaganda, mayhem, chaos, disorder, and turmoil in our lives and the world order. But is there anyone with courage and wisdom? What is the truth and who has the courage to expose it? Because it's your right to know the truth. Watch Truth Prevail and Lies Perish in Truth Exposed by Dr. Zakir Naik every Sunday to Friday at 9 p.m. and repeat telecast at 7.30 a.m. India on Peace TV. Islam for all. Islam for, Islam. for me, for you. For the Arabs, non-Arabs, male and female, poor and rich, and also for the black and white. Look at the beauty of this word, Islam. 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 I S L A M. I shall love all mankind. So, welcome to Islam. Appreciate the uniqueness of Islam that attracts everyone towards it in Islam for All. Next on Peace TV.
the Muslims, they didn't have a choice because there were not many Islamic banks and they were compelled to keep their funds with conventional banks and they were compelled to go to the conventional banks for their funding needs. So this is uh, not happening now. They are going to the Islamic banks. They are placing their funds with Islamic banks and whenever they need funding from the Islamic banks, they are doing it as per Sharia. So the Islamic finance is helping a lot of people from getting out of riba, helping them to sign peace treaty with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because indulgence and interest is uh, uh, like waging war with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So cutting ties with the riba is signing is like signing peace treaty with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second important element which has happened is that the uh, consensus between Sharia scholars who are heading this movement, who are at the forefront, the opportunities that they meet now is much more than before. Different conferences, different forums, Islamic Fiqh Academy, IOFI in Bahrain, Islamic Development Bank, where most of the scholars are uh, taking part in running the Islamic Development Bank Affairs. And there are other forums, Islamic Financial Services Board. It has also its own Sharia board where these scholars meet. And the recent phenomena has been in the UAE, a joint Sharia board of all Islamic banks operating in the UAE, in which the scholars from all those institutions are represented. And this uh, joint Sharia board has taken some bold steps. Some policy matters have been taken with unanimous decisions. And it's a very welcome sign. And as um, our Ustaz Dr. Hussain Hamid Hassan says, the time is not far when the entire Gulf countries will have a unified Sharia board. Perhaps it will come sooner rather than later. So on the regulatory side, there's a lot of work being done. IOFI Sharia standard, IOFI accounting standard, the risk management tools, and the capital advocacy tools set up by the uh, IFSB, Islamic Fiqh Academy holding its sessions, and the likes. Another important element, the suku, a fascinating instrument. It has caught the imagination of the world. Even the conventional financial institutions and the institutional investors are fascinated by a sukuk. A sukuk was done in 2006. It was a securitization sukuk for a home finance company. It is still holding good. The rating agencies are still holding the rating. They haven't downgraded the rating because it is backed up by the real assets. The funds are coming up, aviation fund, the shipping fund, the real estate fund, the mutual funds. And investors are really impressed by the growth of these funds and then the performance of these funds. And then we have the Islamic treasury products. Islamic treasury products have also come in the market. So there is a lot of um, activity, the product development, the FX hedging, how to hedge the FX innovation taking place. Now, a customer does not need to go to a conventional bank for all its needs. Retail banking, the personal needs, corporate banking, the corporate needs, and even at the level of the governments, the governments are also taking help from the Islamic finance. A sukuk was done for the highway in Pakistan, where uh, the institutional investors provided funding to purchase the uh, highway, a toll-based highway, and they're getting the income of the toll. The toll income is directly being diverted to the investors for redemption and the return. And last but not least, the uh, Islamic products, 
are now very widely understood in the Western world. We have seen a Sukuki shoot in Germany. We saw the UK government also thinking of issuing a Sukuk. We have seen the um, Islamic home finance institution setting up in Canada and the US. And internationally, the importance of Islamic finance is being recognized. In the following episodes, we will look at the um, economic philosophy of Islam. We look why the um, riba, i.e. the interest in the usury, is forbidden in Sharia. We look at the risk capital and the loan capital, what's the difference? We look also at the differences between the Islamic and conventional banks. We'll also look at the investment structures in Islamic finance, the mudarba, the musharka, the investment wakala, and also the sale structures, like murabaha, istisna, salam, and ijara. And different experts will join you. And I'm sure you will be able to appreciate the effort from Peace TV to bring you, in a very simple language, the concepts of Islamic finance, the characters of the Islamic finance, the parameters of the Islamic finance, and the structures of Islamic finance. With this, we come to an end. And inshallah, we'll meet again in the next episode. Till such time, take care of yourself. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Spread the word, oh man. Spread the word of Islam.